What's up guys, it's Greeny. It's almost travel season. I think it's gonna be a real high season this year. I think people are gonna be traveling everywhere. In this video, I'm gonna give you guys 25 tips to get you ready to travel, get you ready for your big trip. If it's an international trip, you're traveling abroad, these tips are really gonna help you out. Stick around to the end. I'm gonna give a few bonus tips if you're coming to Thailand. That's where I am. Let's get into it. Oh, do, the on, do, if you're new to the channel, I'm Greeny. I'm an American expat living in Thailand right now. My plan was not really to just settle down and be in Thailand. I wanted to travel all over, which I kind of started doing. And then you know what happened, COVID, and I got just stuck in one place and I've been here, but I love it. So I bought a condo here. And now that things are moving around, I'll be traveling all over the world again, I guess, Southeast Asia and the world when I get a chance. But I want to give you guys 25 tips on Things that will make your life a little easier, help you prepare to go on your big trip. Let's get into it. Number one, and this is something that I do, is I mark my suitcase. I make it very identifiable. So I had this big orange sticker. There was two of them. They were like a fishing license I had with my name on it. I scribbled out like it had my driver's license. I scribbled it out. But I put these two stickers on both sides of my suitcase. And when that's coming around the turnstile there, you can see it a mile away. It's a Costco suitcase, so many people have the same suitcase. I want to be able to know which one is mine. I don't want to get mixed up. I don't want somebody grabbing my suitcase. So, you know, some people tie like a pink thing or this or that, but I mean, mine has my name on it. You know, nobody's going to get it mixed up, I don't think. It's pretty bright. Number two is you may want to think about packing light if you're going to an international destination because if you think you might bounce around a little bit, you're not going to just stay in one spot and you want to take like domestic flights, usually they only allow seven kilos, not seven pounds, I was gonna say seven pounds, seven kilos carry-on. And you know, if you got all kinds of stuff, you're gonna to have to pay extra and this and that. So if you can do it, do it. There's laundry in most places you go and it's really cheap. It's really cheap to get laundry done abroad. So just something to consider. Why, why, why carry so much stuff with you? Number three is you might want to bring a voltage converter check into the country you're going to uh for instance i'm in thailand it's 220 usa is you know much lower was at 110 120 whatever it is and if i were to plug in my razor here or say a blow dryer from america with the voltage difference it will burn the motor out a lot of things like your phones things like that they work fine and the plug will work but some countries you go to it's a different shape plug so you may need to get one of those tips that has the different adapters don't forget that. Sometimes it can be a pain in the butt to get that when you're in that other country. Number four, if you are preparing far enough ahead of time, and I guess the waiting list is a while now. For instance, in America, there's the, the Global Traveler, the uh, TSA Pre. It's called the Trusted Traveler Program. If you get this, then it just makes it much easier. I've used the, uh, the uh, Customs Global Travel thing, whatever, I have it and I just get in, I don't gotta answer any questions, I just go right through, I don't even go in the regular line to be questioned. Uh, TSA Pre, it's great, you just go through, you don't gotta take your shoes off, it really speeds things along. Um, it just makes it a lot easier, a lot less stressful. A lot of credit cards will pay for this. I'll cover credit cards later, but uh, your credit card, if you have a travel credit card, may pay for this service. Number five, if you're traveling the whole winter and you may be gone into the spring, into tax season, Get some paperwork, get things prepared ahead of time. You know, maybe you have an account that's gonna take care of your taxes. I know I'm usually gonna be gone from America in tax season, so I got a CPA there. I just fax or email all my documents and they take care of everything for me. Uh, you can also, my first couple of years, I used uh, an online service and I just did my taxes myself here from Thailand. Number six is you might want to have like an extra SIM card or phone because a lot of times when you come to another country what i've been doing is everywhere i go i buy a sim card there and it's like super cheap i was just in vietnam and it was nine bucks for a sim card i just put it in my phone and use that phone for a week but you may want to have a phone or a sim card or something from your own country so you can get those sms messages maybe one of your credit cards is going to try to get a hold of you so you might want to have your regular phone number two another alternative would be to uh, use your carrier, just pay for an international 
package if you're not going to be gone that long. But if you're gone long term, you're going to be gone all winter or whatever, or even longer term than that, then you're going to want to get a SIM card in the country you're going to. Number seven, have copies of your pertinent important information, your passport, your visa, credit cards, front and back. Make sure you have the emergency numbers in case they get lost. And you know, some people just take pictures in their phone. Well, I would recommend having a photocopy and hide it somewhere different in case you say your phone got stolen or your bag got stolen or whatever, and just keep this somewhere totally separate. That way you have it just in case. Number eight, book hotels in advance. Now, this is not always a good idea. It's been a bad idea. I mean, since I've been back in Thailand the last two years, since the pandemic, you can get hotels easy. You can go on a trip and then you, if you change your mind or you decide you don't like a place, you can keep changing. But now that we're gonna be starting to get into the high season here, sometimes hotels get booked up. And at the very minimum, book like your first couple nights, the first place you're gonna stay at ahead of time. Cause sometimes immigration, they're gonna wanna see where you're staying. And at least you have that, that, that confirmation of where you'll be initially. They may ask for that, but not a bad idea to plan out your trip in advance, know where you're gonna be, cause you don't wanna show up somewhere and not have a place to stay or end up staying in some shit place. If you just wanna stay in shit places anyways, don't worry about it. But if you like are a little particular like I am, I like a nice soft bed, I like to do a lot of research and figure out where I'm staying ahead of time, it makes sense to do that. Number nine is make sure you have the right visa or make sure you have a visa. Give you a little story, 2018, I flew out to Hong Kong and my second leg of the trip was supposed to be to Vietnam. We show up at the airport and the Vietnam airplane, I think it's Vietjet, I don't remember exactly which company was there, like maybe it was AirAsia, where's your visa? We're like, we don't need a visa, you need a visa? I planned this trip so far in advance, like somehow I either overlooked it or they changed it, but we ended up just canceling Vietnam and, and going to Thailand. So that kind of messed me up. So like Vietnam, that's like an e-visa. You just go online, you fill it out, and in three days you have the visa. Turkey, same thing. Thailand, if you're a U.S. or European citizen, you can just show up. Uh, they just recently changed it from 30 to 45 days you can stay without, you know, any type of formal visa. But whatever country you're going to, check and see what the recommendations are, what the regulations are. All right, we're getting closer to flight time. You're traveling soon. Getting ready. You're getting fired up. I'm fired up for you, but make a list. Make a list of everything you gotta bring. And if you travel a lot, like I'd have my old list, and if I needed to add anything, I'd add it for my next trip, but that way you always have this list in case something slips your mind. Make a list, check it twice. Number 11, in your carry-on bag, bring a change of clothes. If they lose your shit, which happens all the time, you want to have a change of clothes in case, you know, your clothes get dirty or you got off the airplane, you want to put clean clothes on before you have a chance to go buy new stuff in case you never get your stuff back. You just never know. Also, in your carry-on luggage, pack your medication, pack, you know, any electronics, anything that's valuable, you want to have that in your carry-on luggage. Don't, don't, one time I lost a little cheap iPad thing. I had like a Samsung, whatever, and I'm pretty sure it got stolen. Um, I ended up having a, uh, it was in my carry-on and, and they didn't have enough room. They ended up taking my bag and I'm pretty sure it got stolen because I never saw it again. Either I lost it or it got stolen, but I think it got stolen. Number 12, bring on the airplane some old style earbuds because those are the ones you can plug in to watch a movie. If you got the new ones, you know, the wireless, you're not going to be able to watch the movie that way. And they do give you them sometimes on like longer international trips, but they usually suck. They're not as good as your good uh, earbuds are. Number 13, in my little backpack, I always keep a safety pin. That way I can pop my SIM card in and out. You know, it's nice to just have. You gotta pop, pop it in the little hole. That's how the iPhone works. I'm not sure about the Android, but bring a safety pin so you can change your SIM card if you need to. I use it all the time when I'm coming and going from different places. Number 14, always have a pen in your bag. Uh, Thailand just got rid of the form you had to fill out, but you always had to fill out this this incoming traveler form for customs or immigration or whatever. So many countries still have a form um, that you need to, I forgot what it's called, but you know, you need to, to say what you're bringing in. Number 15, and I had this on my list a long time ago, but now it goes without saying, you know, masks, wipes, you know, just things to keep yourself clean. I always wipe down my table when I get in the airplane. I wipe my screen, all the buttons I'm going to touch. I wipe everything down. I'm pretty sure when I was in uh, Philippines last time, though, 
guy was coughing next to me. I was sick as a dog. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think that that was COVID. Even though I didn't fail the test, I think, I think I had it. Number 16, when you're traveling, don't have a big bulky wallet in your back pocket. Buy like, I bought one of those like RFID uh, ridge wall. Let me see. Hold on. Oh, I got it. Look at this. I think I got it in my pocket actually. So yeah, I use this ridge wallet and it's got all my credit cards. Look at all these credit cards that hold like all these things. And you just keep it inside. It has a money clip and it's just real small, fits in your front pocket. You know, they'd have an easier time fishing your phone out than getting this out. So it's very important you do that. Never keep a wallet in your back pocket. I'll do a video on that. I'll show you different ways that people do pickpocketing and stuff like that. You know, it's a bad idea. Number 17, and I don't know why, but it's just a good idea. Charge all your stuff before you go, your cameras. Just show up with a full charge. Just makes things easier in case, oh God, I wonder we're gonna go out immediately and I forgot to charge my camera, that type of stuff. That, that used to happen to me all the time. So I try to charge everything up before I go and now I got just a ton of crap. So it, it, it's a really good idea. All right, 19, we're getting to the important stuff, money. Got a few things to cover with your money abroad or international or wherever you're traveling to. Don't exchange at your home airport. I remember the first time I went to Asia, it was 2010, we exchanged a little bit of money at the Detroit Metro Airport. Total ripoff, terrible exchange rate, always exchange cash where you go. And usually don't do it right in the airport, wait till you get where you're going. If you have to do um, a little bit in the airport, you can do it. Uh, I'll tell you about that in the Thailand airport. I'm gonna give some few little extra credit tips about Thailand at the end. Number 20, check and see if where you're going is more of like a credit card type place or cash places. Some places like cash is king. They don't want to use credit cards in Thailand here. A lot of places don't even take credit cards. You got to have cash. And if you're just a traveler only coming for a week or two, you're not going to have a bank account. Like these little bank apps are so popular here. They just have the QR code and somebody holds their phone up. You just bam, you pay them, you pay the shop. They have a code, they have the number. It's, it's real easy when you live here to do it. But if you're just visiting, you know, it makes things a lot harder. Number 21, make sure that the credit card you're bringing does not have foreign transaction fees. Why do you want to pay extra money? There's tons of these like travel cards. I have links in the description. If you use my link, you'll get a bunch of miles and all kinds of stuff. I think they give me uh, 10,000 miles for anybody that signs up, but I think I have links. I'll double check before I put this video, but I know like um, IHG I use a lot. I think I have United. I'll put the links in there. And uh, like I was talking about before, they pay for your trusted traveler program. They'll pay for that. They'll reimburse your money. They don't have foreign transaction fees. And if you sign up, they give you just a shit ton of miles. It's a really good deal. I use, I'm a miles guy. I use miles. I get hotels paid for all the time. It works out really great. And don't bring one with a foreign transaction fee. Number 22, try to get an ATM card that waives your ATM costs. I have a Charles Schwab card. I think Fidelity does that, maybe Wise. But some of them, they will reimburse any fees you incur at ATM machines. It's really helpful saves me a lot of money because I get most of my money here through the ATM. Occasionally, I think about once a month for like my major bills, I'll transfer money, but most of it's at the ATM. Number 23, whenever you're using your credit card when you're abroad, do not have the merchant do the conversion for you. Sometimes they'll ask you, do you want this in your home currency? Do you want this in the local cur currency? Always do it in the local currency. Let your bank do the conversion. You'll always be on the better end. If the local company or their bank does the conversion, they're gonna rip you off. You're always gonna lose that way. Number 24, when you're using your ATM at ATMs abroad, a lot of them will ask you, would you like us to do the conversion for you? And all they're gonna do is, it's like on the screen anyways, it's gonna be on your ticket. And it's gonna say like, oh, the money was worth this much, whatever. They do the conversion for you. They charge you a fee for that. I've heard people paying like $50 for just hitting that button, never hit that button. Always decline the ATM doing the conversion for you. That's a total ripoff, a total scam that are done in ATMs at tourist, like touristy places, never do it. Total scam. All right, last regular one. I'll get to some bonus tips here in a minute, a little extra credit. But number 25 is wherever you're going, figure out like what apps may be useful there. Check ahead of time. Like I know I went to, 
I think it was Colombia, Panama, they use Uber. You come over here where I am now in Asia, they use the Grab and the Bolt app, which are both, you know, it's like Lyft, Uber, Bolt, Grab, you know, just the same type of things, ride, ride, transport, food delivery, all that type of stuff. I use Agoda a lot or Booking.com, it's the same company, but to book hotels, that's a good app that I have. I mean, check all the apps, see what would be useful for you in any given country that you're going to. If you're traveling to Thailand, I have a few extra tips for you. I know most of my subscribers uh, are interested in coming to Thailand. Some are coming, some have been here, but let me just run down these tips real quick for you. I'm gonna read them off the list real quick. Specific to Thailand, if you're arriving at Savannapun Airport, after you clear customs, proceed to the basement. In the basement, you're gonna get the best currency exchange rates. Upstairs, you'll see it's like literally two, three baht more that you get when you go down to the basement. It's worth walking down there. That's also where I always get my SIM cards if I was just visiting. They have those down there. I don't know if the rate's any better for them down there or not, but you know, in Thailand, you got uh, True, I use True. I think it's like DTEC, uh, AIS. They're all the same. I don't know. I had AIS before, I have True now. And I'm sure they're all very similar. I don't think it matters which one you get. See what's the cheapest, what's the best deal, and get that one. If you're in the basement and you're heading to central Bangkok, you got the uh, the BTS down there. It's like the subway, but it's like a train that goes above coming out of there. And you can jump on that. It'll take you right into the city of Bangkok. If you're going to be taking a taxi, go back up to the first floor. And I think it's uh, exit three. That's the taxi stand. It's like public taxis. They all line up. You go and there's like a machine you can hit. It'll spit out a ticket. It'll say taxi number four. You proceed to parking spot number four. Jump in the taxi. They take you. That's going to be a lot more money. And, uh, you know, if you're traveling like the Pattaya or Huahin, it could cost you between uh, 1,500 baht to 2,500 baht. Just all depends. I know the price had went up. Gas had went up. I'm not sure what it is now. You have to check when you get there. But if you're coming like after midnight, that's kind of going to be your only choice. If you go to like, I think it's exit seven or eight, there's buses. You could take the bus over to Pattaya or Jom Tien. And that's like, it's like 130 baht. It's cheap. You can do that. But the BTS and the buses, they stop running at a certain time. I think the BTS midnight, maybe 10 or midnight for the buses. So, you know, you're getting one of those late arrivals. You're going to be taking the taxi if you're going any distance or anywhere at all. Well, that's it guys i hope this was useful information if it was check out the video i'm going to put right here this is the one i just did recently about getting ready to travel abroad or move abroad you know if you're going abroad way ahead of time these are good tips to get this stuff done check it out if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up make sure you subscribe i got a few more videos in the in the works giving you guys some information i got some more real estate videos in the works so see you in the next video guys greeny out